Hi, Patrick Fulop here at Effective Martial Arts HQ in Pointe Claire, West Island of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And in this lesson, the seven basic grappling postures. All right, so quick overview first. You have four possible postures from the top position, as well as three from the bottom in a grappling context, meaning that one or the other opponent is already on the ground. So here we go. From the top position, either standing, crouching, combat base with one knee on the ground, either live or dead toes, as well as kneeling on both knees, elbows tight. From the bottom position, we have the seated position like so, either staggered or straight. We have the supine position when we're on our backs, knees in tight, either straight or sideways, as well as the turtle position when we're going to go belly down, elbows tight. So the closed turtle here, or open turtle here. Now let's look at some important details for each, as well as some cool transitions to go from one to the other. All right, so from the top position, you have your standing fighting stance. Now, if you're striking, it's more of an upright position, so we're ready to strike, punch, and or kick, going for takedowns or defending takedowns. If the person is already on the ground, typically, we're gonna have the front knee bent, so we're protecting against kicks to the front leg, and our hands are gonna be low to grab and get control of the legs, and our uh, protect against the groin strikes as well. And our head is gonna be far to protect from those up kicks from the bottom. When we're ready to engage in a grappling attack, we can go in and lean forward. So more of a grappling stance from the standing position here, elbows tight, and we try to grab grips, either going for the legs, going for the arms, or going for the head. This is when we're ready to attack with grappling attacks and we want to be able to transition between both. When we're a little bit lower, we want to drop our level, we're going to connect closer to the ground, we're going to go to the crouching stand. So it's important to be able to have a nice low center of gravity and be able to transition on both feet. Nice and stable in this position here. Hips nice and close to the heels. I like to do this as a warm up as well. And from here, we want to be ready to post with your hands on either side so you can maintain your stability here or either forward, and we want to be able to extend quickly either leg so that we can drive with that leg and push in any direction. So crouching stance is the second one from the top. And next is combat base. And we're going to go one knee on the ground and the other foot upright. In this position, you can have either what we call live toes here, so where you're ready to push with the back legs, so and it gives you a little bit more forward pressure that's possible, or you could go dead toes in the back where you're a little bit lower, and from here you can bring this in close. Key feature as well is having the knee close to the chest and the elbows nice and tight as well to protect the arms. You can have your arm on the outside or on the inside, doesn't really matter depending on what you're trying to accomplish. And you want to be able to do that on either side. So here, combat base, dead toes, live toes, and we want to be able to go high and low, depending on what we're trying to accomplish. The fourth one from the top is the kneeling position. In this case, very important to have your knees wired to so have a nice wide base. And again, you can also have dead toes or live toes in the kneeling position, depending if you want to have a nice and low center of gravity or you want to move forward with attacks. In both cases, in general, you always want to have your elbows tight to your body. That's a general principle in grappling, so you're not giving any arms that are going to be accessible for submissions. So here, kneeling position. Moving on, positions from the bottom. So when the other person is on top and you are on the bottom, we could find ourselves in the seated. That's going to be our general preference uh, to be when we're on the ground because we're one step closer to getting back up using the technical get up. Will be details on that later, but seated position from the bottom, the person is on top. I uh, want to be able to follow them, go side to side. The important thing here, we want to be able to go sideways, and when we are sideways, we want to have our opposite foot and hand on the ground. So if I have my left foot close to my hip on the ground, I want my right hand as base in the back, so that frees up my right foot to be able to attack, and I really want to be able to elevate my hips comfortably so I can slide forward and back, I can attack with kicks, or I can slide myself in for grappling attacks, or retreat to reestablish my guard, whatever the case may be. I also want to be able to be uh, straight or symmetrical. In this case, legs bent, heels in the mat. The key feature of this position is I want to be leaning forward 
quite significantly. So your head should be above your uh, knees at a minimum or even a little bit further forward. So if the person pushes here, you're able to resist and have a strong base. Now you want to be able to transition between uh, each one of those variations. So straight, staggered on the right, staggered on the left, and program your mind to always have opposite foot and hand on the ground. So right foot, left hand, left foot, right hand, and be able to transition between all three variations of the seated position. We're gonna see more movement, uh, sliding ourselves using the sitting shrimp or the scoot uh, in detail in another video. From here, we wanna be able to transition smoothly to our supine position. Sometimes the person gains control of our feet and then we're thrown back on our back, or they try to uh, punch our, or kick our face, we wanna be able to duck under that. Or even they go in for a grappling attack and try to grab our neck for a guillotine, we wanna be able to hide that. So you go to your back. In this case on the back, you could be straight here, or you could be sideways here on the side. In both cases, you wanna have your knees really, really close to your chest. This is really important. Now, if your flexibility is not quite there yet, and you're struggling, and the core strength, we're gonna work on that. We have many drills that'll help you for that. For flexibility, you wanna be able to pull your foot and bring your knee behind your shoulder, like this. Here, so work on the hip joint flexibility so you can really seal your guard like this. You can also do it from the other side here. As a drill or as a stretch, you drop your shoulder nice and low, try to get it below your knee on either side, and that increases the range of motion of the hip, which will allow you to seal your guard. The other component is having a strong core, and we saw a very cool uh, video with the abs for grappling exercises, uh, link in the cards above, to make a nice strong core. Usually when people start, that's the challenge they have uh, at the beginning, is getting a strong enough core to do those postures correctly. So, uh, in either case, that's what you're going for. You're trying to have your knees connected to your chest, like so, here. So shoulders or chest, knees are nice and tight, like this. And the elbows are connected to the knees. That's another general principle, which we will touch back on in future videos for guard retention. You wanna have your elbows protected against submissions and have your knees closed so that you seal your guard and you're limiting the openings for guard passes. From here, you wanna be able to go to the side like this, and this is gonna be useful in many different situations. Again, key feature, elbow connected to the knee, knees nice and close to the chest. And we wanna be able to do that on both sides. Here, sideways, I'm ready to frame, protect against strikes, using this leg to do whatever, and back to symmetrical or straight, and back to the side. A uh, cool feature of the uh, side supine position is you wanna be able to do what we call the air shrimp or to elevate your hips. So we wanna be able to bring our weight forward, post on your bottom foot, and get your hips in the air here. And that's gonna be useful for different attacks or defensive maneuvers on the ground. You wanna be able to elevate. And this connects in nicely to the shoulder roll technique. So if we elevate like this, basing with the inside elbow, make sure and nice and stable, you can use your hand to assist. You wanna be able to get your head all the way under and you're in a shoulder roll position, can you wind up on the other side. So here, more detail. And we did a shoulder roll video, check it out, cards above as well. So that's your supine position from bottom position on the ground. Next, we wanna be able to transition to turtle. This is gonna be really important when our guard is about to get past or it's partially past, person got around the legs, we don't wanna expose our chest, but we have to manage transitions. More detail on that later, but for now, turtle position. So we're gonna scissor the legs and go belly down and immediately bring the knees under our body and close in with the elbows. So we can have the closed turtle position here, posting on the forehead, like so, hips nice and low, or, open turtle position like this. This will be more useful when the person is in front of us and we wanna prevent them from going in the back. So preventing the go behind, hands are gonna be nice and long, we can stop the person here. And then we can even go on the offense here with the takedown, uh, the wrestling attack from the bottom position to reverse here. So turtle position, you want to, uh, when it is closed, you wanna be able to have your elbows really, really close to your body. So if I were belly down right now, this is the position I'm in with the elbows physically connected to the rib cage and the hands protecting the neck and ready to protect against strikes as well. So when I'm on the ground, looks like this, I'm here, boom, I'm ready to protect on the other side. And you wanna really wanna close this gap here on the side where your elbow is super tight and you're ready to protect so that the person cannot get a hook in or get the seat belt. So that's your closed turtle position and this is your open turtle position. All right, now let's look at the important transitions between each. So you wanna be able to transition smoothly from any one of those stances to any one of the others. So here it goes. From the standing position, easy. Go down the crouching, 
Easy, go down to combat base or go down to kneeling. We also want to be able to go down to seated, either forward or backwards. Go down to supine, like this, or go down to turtle, like this, from here. From the crouching position, also very self-explanatory. So crouching position, go to standing, other, boom, combat base, kneeling, crouching, to seated, here. Throw the legs under, basically a reverse technical get up. So crouching to seated, crouching to supine, crouching to turtle. And then we want to be able to do from the other positions as well. So from seated, transition to standing. So that's our technical get up. We have another video with this in more detail. So here, boom, get up, seated to supine. Seated to turtle. Seated to the other side. Smooth transitions. Seated to combat base. Seated to kneeling. I want to be able to do that. And from the back as well. From the back, getting up to seated. Either side. Getting up to seated. From the back to turtle. This is a little bit more tricky. So we're going to go here. We're on our backs. We're going to scissor our legs and pulse on our toes, go up on our shoulder, and bring our knees under our body, elbows tight for the close turtle position. We do that on either side. Scissor, transition. We also want to be able to go from the supine position to turtle. So here, all the way towards the back. So throw the legs over the body, and go either turtle, kneeling, or combat base like that. We also want to be able to go from turtle to supine, over the shoulder, be able to roll over the shoulder. So go here, pick a shoulder, roll over it, and then adjust depending on where the opponent is, we're gonna point our feet towards them. Again, on this side here, turtle, boom, go in like this to supine. I also wanna be able to go from turtle, getting up properly, so I'm here, turtle position, I wanna get up, post one hand, post one foot, hips under, and boom, we're all the way up, or we stay down, whatever the case may be. Now, let's do those transitions a little bit faster. This is a cool drill you can do in class where the instructor calls the positions and everybody does it as fast as they can. Here we go. Standing, seated, switch sides, supine, turtle, roll to supine, back to turtle, stand up, kneel down, combat base, stand back up, combat base, switch sides, crouching, Extend the leg, post out. You also want to be able to post with your hands in either direction so you don't fall. Back to standing, combat base, combat base, kneeling, seated, switch, supine, supine on the side, supine on the other side, elevate the hips, elevate the hips, and back to standing. Okay, so this is a good example of a cool drill you can do in class to practice transitioning smoothly between each one of those positions. Whew. All right, so there you have it guys, the uh, seven grappling postures. So this is really foundational stuff. This part of our white belt program, um, we really, our goal is to help our students improve faster uh, and always keep on helping them improve faster through innovation. So uh, identifying those basic postures that our students need to know when they begin is really helpful if they take the time to do them right and to transition smoothly from each. It really facilitates the learning of techniques as well as principles that need to be applied in the grappling range. And this is true for striking as well as wrestling. So you want to understand the basics, have a strong foundation and then uh, layer on top of that to add complexity, techniques, strategies, and eventually become effective in that range. So um, allowing you to uh, move in those ways will allow you to, uh, one, maintain access with your opponent. So you always want to have your opponent in front of you. You want to have your barriers, especially on the ground when we're talking about guard retention. We'll do more videos on that later. Um, as well as having a sound attacking position when you are on top, as well as uh, simultaneous offense and defense. So you always want to be mindful of what openings you're giving to your uh, opponent so that what you can exploit in terms of attacks, as well as what you can attack uh, in different situations. So um, 
If you are an instructor and you are uh, leading classes, uh, we encourage you when you're doing the drill, and that goes for you as well as a beginner if you're just starting out and you really want to take the time to master these postures, go slowly at first. Really take the time to identify your position, identify the details of each position so that you, are, you know that you are in a sound position for each. Don't rush it, okay, like I kind of did at the end. You will get there with practice. So start slow, go from one position to the other and really take the time to make sure that you are in right position before you transition. That goes as well for instructors. If you're leading a class, observe. You wanna be sensible to uh, your student's performance and really observe closely your student's performance because that's your role as an instructor is to make sure that they're doing things correctly and they're going as fast as they're able to do it correctly. So if they got it right, yeah, accelerate and add complexity, make it more challenging. But if they're not, have the presence of mind to slow them down, give them the appropriate feedback so they really get it before they introduce speed to the technique. And that's a general principle that goes for any martial arts techniques and probably most sports as well. So there you have it, guys. Uh, hope that you found this uh, video helpful. If you have any questions, uh, comments, please uh, leave in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, click like. The video will appear in your liked videos and you can come back to it often and easily. And uh, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. We are really excited. We've got lots of cool uh, video tutorials and demonstrations, techniques, breakdowns coming up in every range of fighting. So that's all what we're all about with effective martial arts, striking, wrestling, and grappling in one structured curriculum. So really excited about that. Uh, and uh, if you know anyone who could benefit from these techniques, feel free to share as well. Hopefully it could be useful to them as well. Good information for all martial artists. So till next time, Patrick Phillip here at Effective Martial Arts HQ in Pointe Claire, West Island of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Thanks for watching and practice well.